welcome back to another episode of NRVTA Influenced. I'm here with Howard and Caitlin from New State Nomads. <laughs> Thanks you for thought I wasn't going to do it, and I got it. <laughs> Nailed job. it. Nailed it. Well, okay, so again, on our show, the episodes here, typically people come to me and ask questions, technical questions, but there's so much about RVing that, you know, isn't covered on our channel. So having uh, influencers on to influence us, to influence you, the audience, it's a great mix. So the question we have, let's just first start off, easy question, New State Nomads, where did, we, where did you come up with that? So it's actually our, our last name, uh, Nomads. And so well, there we, go. Uh, we travel um, a lot to new states. So uh, yeah, that's no. Our, our last name is actually New State. Right. Uh, really, legally, honest to God, it's New State. And so, uh, what better travel name than New State? And so, New State Nomads. Knowing just a little bit about you, you guys said you guys are RV in a lot of non-traditional places, and I guess that's kind of the allure of your channel as well as people doing that. So. Uh, as you said just before, you're saying a lot of people think great outdoors or everything else, but you guys do something a little bit different. You called it urban camping. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, we like to think of our RV as like a home on wheels, right? And so we can explore all these amazing places and have our home with us. I mean, what's better than that? You know, as opposed to perhaps staying in a hotel or Airbnb, we have all the creature comforts, we have our pets, we travel with three dogs. Right. Uh, and so we have everybody together and we, we do camp a lot of times very close to major cities and areas to explore. Um, yeah, because I do think RVing, people think recreational vehicle, they think the great outdoors, <laughs> and we do that too. Uh, but we also like to explore cities. Yeah, you can actually find a lot of really good, inexpensive or even free camping nearby a city. And then we do have a tow vehicle, so we'll take that in and go explore for the day. So inside the city, let's let's talk dumping. Where where do you guys take care of that? That's a great question. And thankfully, we're not um, you know reinventing the wheel here. There's a lot of people before us who have traveled these places. Um, but the truth is, out west, um, a lot of gas stations. Uh, major chain gas stations will have uh, free dump stations, free water, uh, so we can replenish in that way. Even rest areas yep. along interstates will right. have them too. Yeah, and there's apps out there as well. Um, you know, shout out to like, you know, iOverlander, Campendium. Um, I think there's even one that's called like free, free dump, dump sites. <laughs> free dump sites. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's lots of resources out there as far as finding uh, what you need in order to, to dump our tanks and all that. Um, in some cities, we were in a city recently where they actually had one inside the city limits that we could that's, use. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. what I was looking at. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, particularly in the smaller cities and actually like in Texas, so we're here in Texas right now, Texas is plentiful of free campsites inside of cities, in some cases full hookup, and at the very least they have water and electric and a dump station. Yeah. Um, what a great amenity to have to invite people to visit and explore your area. Real quick, tell us about a day. If you go on urban camp and you go in there, You've got all your facilities taken care of. What's the allure of doing the urban camping? Or do, you, do you guys go visit you know, the local breweries? What is it you, know, you, oh, you guys like to do? Yeah, it's anything and everything. So right. <laughs> yeah, local breweries, wineries, restaurants, um, just all different parks. And we like to talk to locals a lot. You know, If you go into a brewery, ask the people hanging out there, like what are some off the beaten path places or what's the local hangout? You know, we've gotten some really awesome insider tips from doing that. Like we found out about a really cool place in Maine that had like super inexpensive lobster dinners where all the locals go. It was like a dive bar and it was amazing lobster dinners that we wouldn't have known about had we not asked locals. So that's kind of our jam too. We love digging deeper and really living like a local. And that's the prize, you know, that wherever you go, there's always something around. You just gotta go find it. You yeah. gotta go search and find it. So outside the urban um, uh, camping, any other more exotic places you guys have been? And how do you guys choose those? <laughs> oh, absolutely. So we've traveled uh, over 80,000 miles since we hit the road four years ago. Uh, we've been to Alaska twice. Uh, we've been through almost all of Canada. Uh, we've been to mainland Mexico. We've t gone all the way to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Um, how do we find it? I, some of it is honestly inspiration that we see either online or um, you know, a there's there's for example, I'm really into butterflies. It's actually one of my favorite animals, <laughs> and uh, there just so happens to be where the monarch butterflies migrate is in a small patch of land in Mexico, in central right. Mexico, 
And so we timed our trip when we went to Mexico so that way we could see the billions of monarch butterflies on every single surface around you. It was absolutely an incredible experience and only would have been possible because of the RV. So let's say uh, someone wants to uh, RV in Mexico. What are the considerations? How long does it take? What, what, what is some quick advice? Hey, look, you need to do this, this, and this before you cross the border. I would say, like first and foremost, the biggest question we get is safety. And just like there are certain places that you might not go in the US or Canada or anywhere, you know, it's like doing your due diligence. The entire country of Mexico is wonderful, but there are certain pockets that you wouldn't go to. And so really kind of doing your research there. There are amazing resources online. Again, we're not trailblazers. We aren't the first people doing this. Um, so we really leaned heavily into that and to people who have gone before us, who are down there now and just kind of doing those re that research and mapping out those places like the Monarch Butterfly location like that you want to make sure that you hit. Yeah, and then after our trip, we actually developed our own guide because we realized there was such a deficit for that. So we have an RVing in Mexico planning guide. We also there have we one for Alaska as well because there, there are resources out there, but unfortunately, like if you take the Alaska example, um, the milepost, which is like the <laughs> beacon of information, so is also 600 pages. <laughs> And it's so much information that frankly you need it condensed down. And so that's what we try to do also with Mexico is like, let's cover safety, let's cover communication, let's cover where do you find water? People think that like, don't drink the water in Mexico. Well, the truth is there is fresh drinking water that's available everywhere because you're right, don't drink the water in Mexico. Like the locals, the don't, locals drink don't drink the water. water. Yeah, and so there, there are little things like that that once you can kind of get over some of these hurdles, once you're in Mexico, it's, it's incredible. The people are so friendly, the food, the culture, and the incredibly low cost. Uh, average camping cost, if you're at a campground, um, is around $10 a day, uh, and that will be a full hookup location um, with on-site laundry, restaurant, and all of that. I mean, these are uh, wow. really inexpensive ways to travel. Okay, it's a good eye-opening experience. Now, one last thing. I understand you guys are pretty avid um, boondockers. <laughs> Yes. Right. And I hear you do short stints. Is that correct? <laughs> We've stayed a day or two right. off grid. Yeah. Actually, what is 100 plus days? Yes. 125 days straight is our is our record. Uh, we did that in 2020. We went 125 straight days. And I do want to be clear that this was not something that we were always comfortable with, especially me. Like if you are like, oh my gosh, I could never do that. I need hookups. That's how I was in the beginning. I was very much like, I need to know exactly where we're going to be. I need to have electric. I need to have water. And over time it's evolved. And now it's like, we love being off grid. And so, you know, it's take those baby steps to work up to it. It's not going to happen overnight. And it certainly didn't for me, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and also, by that point in 2020, we had already been to Alaska once uh, where there's tons and tons of boondocking, amazing boondocking. And even then, we were still a little bit paranoid and concerned. So we were doing little short stays and then we'd go back to a regular campground. But then in 2020, when we came out of Mexico, we were like, okay, we can totally do this. And so it started off first as like a couple uh, days here and then a week, then two weeks, and then it was a month. And then we're like, oh, How can, far we, can, can we, push can we this? keep going? <laughs> and, uh, and we did. Now, that doesn't mean that we stayed completely away from sure. civilization for 125 days. About every week or maybe every 10 days or so, we would go into a town, sure. dump our tanks, mm -hmm. re reload with water, but then we go right back out again. Yeah. Did y'all stay in the same place or did y'all We travel? moved around. It was predominantly during that 125 day stint. It was like Arizona, Colorado, Utah. Yeah. I think those were the main areas. Those are the major ones. And then mm -hmm. also Missouri, Kansas. Mm -hmm. uh, because we, we started in Arizona. We were outside of Flagstaff uh, in National Forest Land. And then we went to Grand Canyon. And then it just started to snowball because then we went into Colorado. And Colorado just has epic free camping everywhere. And the only reason that our, our streak ended was because we had to come back east and it's just so much harder to find free camping out east. Gotcha. Okay, so work related, I guess, that brought you back family. in? Family. It was Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was Thanksgiving yeah. and we were trying to find camping around <laughs> family. Uh, it was in Kentucky. Yeah. The, the stint ended in Kentucky. Gotcha. And I think Howard shed a little tear. I did. So you, <laughs> you got a lot of great information. You said to provide it out there. You condense it down. Where can uh, everyone find this info? So on YouTube, we're New State Nomads. We also have a website, newstatenomads.com. All of our guides are listed there. We have a community of wonderful travelers, RVers, and yeah, Instagram, New State Nomads. It's all New State Nomads. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's based on our last name, Nomads. <laughs> Well, Howard, Caitlin, we greatly appreciate you guys here. Wonderful information. And that's another episode of NRVTA Influenced. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right.